Good morning and welcome to John's Memorial. My name is Nancy Mack. I'm the rector here at John's Memorial in Farmville, and we are so happy that you are here with us today. And I want to thank all of our participants who are participating in our service today. Our service can be found in the Book of Common Prayer. If you do not have a Book of Common Prayer, you can get it online at bcponline.org, and a bulletin can be found in the YouTube notes. There is a link there for you to click on. Again, welcome. We are thrilled to have you with us today. Our service continues on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him. And he cried out, Send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, and the household of Pharaoh heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years. And there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honored in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, while Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. his people. By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Do you not know what the scripture says of Elijah, how he pleads with God against Israel? 
for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in, in disobedience, so that he may be merciful to all. but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you not know the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, explain this parable to us then he said are you also still without understanding do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer but what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart and this is what defiles for out of the heart comes evil intentions murder adultery fornication theft false witness slander these are what defile a person but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. 
The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Families are difficult, and the family of Abraham is no different. In fact, through Abraham's family, we can see the evolution of family dysfunction. If you've seen a family systems genogram, which is basically a family tree that has lots of lines and dashes and broken lines going from person to person, in a family, you have seen what is known as cutoff. Cutoff is when one member of a family or one family unit cuts off from another individual or family. In Abraham's family, it appeared as though Isaac cut off from his father after his father started to sacrifice him on the altar for God. Jacob cut off from Esau and ultimately from his parents when he tricked his brother and father and fled north to his mother's home. Jacob's older sons cut off both emotionally and literally from Joseph when they threw him in a pit to die. As Joseph called out to his brothers pleading he would change, he wouldn't tell their father. He wouldn't be a bratty younger brother. The brothers just left him. They had nothing to say to him. We're seeing a similar phenomenon in our society today. As families and groups cut off from others because of differences such as gender, race, religion, education, economic status, and education. As the cutoff becomes more persistent, the depth and breadth of the cutoff becomes more painful to those affected. Joseph cut off from his family Joseph, now cut off from his family, is a leader in Egypt, overseeing the distribution of grain during a famine. And when famine hit Egypt, the land of Canaan and surrounding areas, people were told to see one of Pharaoh's men who had handled the sale of the grain. Joseph had been given an Egyptian name, so when his brothers, sent by their father to buy grain, came before him, they didn't recognize the name or the face. It had been 22 years since they had seen their brother, and life had not been particularly easy for their brothers. Having left their brother and lied to their father, they lived daily with the self-recrimination and guilt as they watched their father weep over the loss of Joseph. If they told their father Joseph had been sold into slavery and might still be alive, they would have to admit what they had done and risk death themselves and loss of their inheritance. They would certainly be cut off from the family. Now seeing his brothers, Joseph has a chance, a chance to repair the relationship, the cutoff that has pained him since his youth. But before he trusts his brothers again, Joseph had to test them to see if they had changed since he had last seen them. Were they still up to the same old scheming? To put them on the defensive, Joseph called them spies and demanded to know who they were and where they had come from. Was their father still alive? Did they have other brothers? Hearing his father and Benjamin were still alive, Joseph told his brothers to go home and return with their younger brother. When the brothers returned with Benjamin and shared their story of how their father would die if anything happened to Benjamin, Joseph could see they had changed. Joseph had changed quite a bit as well. The once naive, bratty young kid had grown up. As he listened to the Lord, Joseph's success grew and grew. And all could see the Lord walked with Joseph, and Joseph walked with the Lord. Alone now with his brothers, Joseph wept until he finally said, I am your brother. I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? When the brothers realized it was Joseph, they were too stunned to speak. Again, he said, I'm your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. 
For God sent me before you to preserve life. God sent me before you. Hurry and go to my father. God's made me a Lord of all of Egypt. I'll provide for you so that you will not come into poverty. This story reminds me of a meeting I had with Bishop John Buchanan, my sponsoring bishop in West Missouri, when I had just begun the process toward the priesthood. It is the custom for postulants for the priesthood to write Ember Day letters to their bishops two or three times a year. And early in my process, I had been in a course titled something like Ministry in the World. And I had just started sort of taking a couple classes on the side and working part time. Uh, I hadn't actually gone off to the Seminary of the Southwest yet. So I was working as a developmental psychologist at the time at the University of Kansas Medical Center. So in response to this question of what my ministry might look like, I think I described something that looked very similar to my job. Well, in my naivete, I sent a copy of this paper in with my Ember Day letter. Bishop Buchanan called me into his office, sat me down, and wanted to know wanted me to know that ministry was not about where I wanted to go or even what I thought I was trained to do. I would go where God needed me and the bishop called me. I heard his words and almost 20 years after our initial discussion, Bishop Buchanan was called as the interim bishop of the Diocese of Southern Virginia. My canonical residence was in the Diocese of Virginia, so I needed to go to Norfolk to talk with Bishop Buchanan about receiving my letter demissory. We talked about things in ministry since I had been ordained and recalled times in Kansas City, and he signed off on my papers and everything was good. And then I reminded him of what he had said to me about going where God needed me, and I thanked him. It had made, it made an impression on me. Then when I was just about ready to leave, I looked over at him and said, you know, you're not nearly as scary as you used to be. Then I sort of gasped that I had said that. He paused, chuckled a bit, and said, well, I think we both have changed. 20 years ago, I was naive and he was a new bishop and we were both a bit unsure of ourselves. Yes, I think we both had changed, and perhaps that's the point. We are capable of change. Change is a choice. Change is a choice. And whatever we have done or left undone, God will welcome us much like Joseph welcomed his brothers. We may have thrown God in the pit at some time or turned our back on God, but God still welcomes us and loves us as God's children. There is nothing we can do to separate ourselves from the love of God. And when we entered into this pandemic, many of us felt we knew who we were and where we were going and what our future might look like. And COVID-19 has shaken us to the core. But I want to just affirm that underneath, in our hearts and minds, we are still children of God. We are still people of faith. And like Joseph, we know the Lord is walking with us. And so we walk with the Lord daily, who leads us in the paths of righteousness. Yes, the Lord is walking with us, and we are walking with the Lord. For some, in the absence of a deep faith or a strong family or a nucleus of supportive friends, it has been difficult and for some, it is truly a mental health crisis. And it has been my observation that many people in crisis have tremendous difficulty reaching out for help. Many due to histories of cutoff in their own families of origin are afraid to seek help and perhaps put out of their homes at one time because of de decisions involving race, income, gender, politics, or economic status. People may be afraid. And this is where we come in. I believe God sent us where we are today, wherever that might be, because God wants to use us as God used Joseph right here, right now, today. 
we are here to care for our brothers and sisters, regardless of what our differences might be. We are one family. Any cutoff that might have one day existed can be restored. God heals families one person at a time and one family at a time. God recognized the cutoff in Abraham's family and sent Joseph to save his brothers and to restore their family. And God sent Jesus to save us from the same life of brokenness and to share with us the love God has for all of God's children. I believe Joseph speaks for all of us. I am your brother. I am your sister. Together, we will carry the love of God to the ends of the earth. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Prayers of the People O oh God, our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. In this challenging and uncertain time of global pandemic and public health crisis, we come before you offering our prayers on behalf of those in need, the church, and the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the church, that it may not grow weary of proclaiming the gospel of Christ and serve as a beacon of hope to, in a suffering world. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Susan, our bishop, Nancy, our rector, Carolyn, our assisting priest, Helen, our campus minister, and all who minister in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all affected by the coronavirus around the world, for the leaders of the nations, that they may work together for the common good as the outbreak spreads. May barriers that divide be brought down, that bonds of trust may be strengthened to benefit the entire human family. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Grant public health and government officials in our nation the strength and the will to act swiftly and decisively with wisdom and compassion and service to all. We pray especially for Donald, President of the United States, the Congress, governors, and elected officials in local municipalities. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For healthcare workers who with hearts of service stand on the front lines of providing care, Grant them courage and protection as they put the needs of public safety before their own. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Remove the presence of fear and anxiety from our hearts, that confident in your providence we may be generous in sharing our resources. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the hope and comfort of the Holy Spirit for those whose lives are overshadowed by illness or pain, for those whose lives are darkened by sorrow or bereavement, especially the Halliday family, Richard, Richard, Mutt, Charles, Jan, David, Barbara, Bill, Geraldine, Mary Jo, Marshall, Thomas, Caitlin, Peyton, Gwen, Tom, Chester, Jennifer, Gail, Mike, Rick, Kim, 
Martha, Glenna, Caroline, Jennifer, Yannick, Susan, and Kelsey. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all saints, especially Susan Michael Harwood, they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A prayer for the power of the Spirit among the people of God. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle us in your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest, and grow in the Holy Spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God, our neighbor, and ourselves. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us greet one another in peace.
And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us always. Thank you for being with us today. We hope you have a wonderful week, and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.